with the final accident report still pending in over two and a half years since the Ethiopian Airlines Max crash. Now comes word that Ethiopian Airlines has rejected advice from their attorneys to sue Boeing for billions and instead has agreed to a settlement for less. A lot less. But why? I'm gonna tell you. Next on Maximus. Greetings everybody, Maximus here. I hope you're all doing well, wherever you may be all around this great big world of ours. Well, it's been a little while since we've had some Boeing Max news, and this is some pretty big news. But it's also a little bit puzzling, too. This week, Ethiopian Airlines management announced that they've reached a settlement with Boeing over their brand new Max jet that crashed on March 10th of 2019, claiming all on board. They also announced that they expect to resume flying the MAX again in Ethiopia by this January. In an interview that ran in Bloomberg News on Thursday, Ethiopian Airlines CEO Tewoldi Jabri Moran said that he was convinced beyond a reasonable doubt that the MAX has been upgraded by Boeing after the two devastating crashes and is now safe. He followed that by also saying we are happy with the settlement. I can confirm, he said, that we are committed to the Boeing 737 MAX. My estimate is by the end of the calendar year or the beginning of next year in January, we will be flying the airplane. The Ethiopian government's aviation agency hasn't yet lifted the order grounding the MAX, but it's quite clear that the government-owned airline is already planning on the grounding being lifted by year's end. The financial terms of the settlement were not disclosed. However, the Seattle Times reported this past January that Boeing had offered between $500 and $600 million, a large portion of which wasn't in cash but financial incentives, which included discounts on future airplanes and waivers on maintenance costs. According to the Seattle Times article, a Chicago law firm advising Ethiopian Airlines wrote a letter to the CEO Tewaldi in January of this year, urging him to reject the settlement offer and instead sue Boeing for punitive damages in the U.S., hoping to win not less than $1.8 billion in cash. That advice, however, was not taken. But a person with knowledge of the final settlement said that it includes a payment of only $280 million in cash, discounts on future planes, free maintenance and parts for three years, and replacement of the aircraft that crashed, with an estimated value for the total package less than $600 million. However, it seems to me that the airline is opting to take the settlement now, rather than endure a long, drawn-out legal battle, no matter how well the odds were stacked in their favor, may have more to do with simply surviving the economic downturn caused by the max grounding along with the 18-month pandemic grounding because Ethiopian Airlines needs to get planes in the air and start generating much-needed revenue today. They can't wait 10 years. But simultaneously this week, along with news of the settlement agreement, Ethiopian Air also announced another agreement with Boeing that is said to be unrelated to the settlement. However, I think the two announcements are definitely related. The airline announced that Boeing will partner with Ethiopian to make the airline's base in Addis Ababa, quote, Africa's aviation hub, plus Boeing is going to set up a manufacturing facility there to make airplane parts. Ethiopia already supplies some small-scale wire harnesses for Boeing aircraft, but Boeing has committed to expand local capabilities both in aerospace manufacturing and in airplane repair and overhaul. This aviation work will complement the planned construction of a new $5 billion airport south of the capital. In addition, the partnership will promote the training of pilots and aircraft technicians at the Airlines Aviation Academy in Addis Ababa and aviation and science education in Ethiopian schools. Bob Clifford, a Chicago-based lawyer representing families of the crash victims, isn't surprised by the news of the settlement. Life goes on, Clifford said. Boeing very much wants to put this chapter behind it. But for the families of those killed in the MAX crashes, there is little desire to move on. Javier de Luis, an aerospace engineer and the brother of a 63-year-old victim of the Ethiopian Air MAX crash, citing the manufacturing issues that have stopped deliveries of the 787 Dreamliner, as well as the aborting of Boeing's latest Starliner rocket launch, said that the problems at Boeing are ongoing, 
and I can see no evidence of any fundamental change in the company culture or behavior since the crash. DeLuise said, I don't understand why we keep acting as if this is the same Boeing from 30 years ago. It's not. Michael Stumo, father of 24-year-old Samaya Rose Stumo, who was killed in the Ethiopian crash, said Boeing is using money to buy off Ethiopian Airlines. He said he remains committed to pushing for increased aviation safety through tighter oversight of Boeing by the Federal Aviation Administration. Stumo said this summer the FAA slowed certification of Boeing's next new plane, the 777X, directed Boeing to rework its flight manuals for both the 777 and MAX 10 to include detailed emergency pilot procedures, and ordered Boeing to improve the independence of engineers working on airplane certification after a third of those surveyed by the FAA said they feel they cannot raise safety concerns without interference. And finally, Stumo said, the only way to change the culture is for the FAA to continue to be muscular. So here's my question for you. What would you do if you were in charge of Ethiopian Airlines? Would you have sued Boeing for billions or would you have simply taken the deal in order to move on and start generating revenue again? Let me know down below. Okay, so I know the inclination of many will be to accuse Boeing of strong-arming Ethiopian Air into taking the settlement. And you would be right. But that move also goes on every day in giant corporations all around the world. It's not unique to Boeing. But you have to look at it from Ethiopian Air's point of view too. In a nation continually torn by civil war, and the fact that their aviation system has been decimated by the MAX and pandemic groundings, they need to start making money now, and not hope that in 5 or 10 years from now, they will win a legal battle with Boeing. So far, it seems that the problems that brought down the MAX have indeed been fixed. And Ethiopian Air is indeed satisfied with that fact and have chosen the path of least resistance. But like I said, let me know what you think. Well, that's all I have for now. Remember, if you want to support the channel, links are down below. And as always, on your way out, remember to like, subscribe, share and ring the bell. And remember... Leave the rubber on the runway and your troubles on the ground. And I will see you next time in the air. Yeah, this is Maximus. <laughs>